This obviously is a mongoose bike. It's one of the cheaper bikes that you could buy. And up front here, we have the information of the box. It says it's the Mongoose Malus. It's one of the bikes in the series of Mongoose bikes that is available on your department store kind of deal. Uh, stores like Walmart, Kmart, or you could buy it on Amazon, eBay, or other online stores. It's not one of the more expensive bikes. I believe Walmart has the Mongoose Dolomite, and uh, these people in Kmart have the Mongoose Malus. And you can get these online, any one of them. They're basically the same bike. What changes in them is mostly the rims. One of them has holes in them taken out to gain a little bit on the weight side, make it a little bit lighter. The other doesn't have that and that kind of stuff. There's not really that much of a deal in difference. Color, uh, sticker schemes and all that kind of stuff. But that's just about it. There's not much difference there. They all use cheap parts made in China. This one actually goes here for 340 something. Um, I actually got it with a discount. So it actually cost me $315 here locally. Um, of course, you have to put tax on that. So if we get tax into the mix, I was originally going to pay $390 for it. And I actually ended up paying $350 with the tax and everything. Yeah, I know it sucks, but we got to live with that. And it's not the only place that has some taxes that some might consider abusive. But as I said, we have to live with that. So let's go forward. I found a lot of positive feedback when I was doing my research for this type of bike. And to that point, this is actually a fat tire bike. Fat tires are gaining popularity and I really like how they look, but that is not the main reason I got this bike actually. There are a lot of drain holes that are badly constructed here where I live. And it's some of those types that have a metal cover on them and they have all those nice little slots. I put a picture somewhere obviously. Um, hopefully I can make that in the edit. But anyways, the thing is that they put the holes vertically to where you're riding on your bicycle. So if you don't know that's there or you're riding at night or for any reason you have to cross it straight, you're gonna go into that and you're gonna fall over because the front tire is gonna go into it and you're gonna flip the bike or fall to the side or whatever because you didn't take it in a proper way, which would be to obviously come from the side and cut into it sideways, not go straight forward. I really don't know what brought them to actually put all of them vertically instead of horizontally where any bicycle or motorcycle can pass over it and hopefully not fall into it. But it is what it is and I have to live with that. So one of the reasons, uh, one of the main reasons I actually got a fat bike is for that. There are a lot of potholes, a lot of bumps, a lot of sewer drains. You know, there's a whole lot of perils on the road. And after riding the Hyper Havoc for a while with the thinner tires or the mountain bike tires, I am pretty sure that I really would like to have some fat tires and it would make it a lot safer for me to ride on the road here where I live, do my daily commute and all that type of stuff. Another thing is that on my other e-bike project, which is the Hyper Havoc that I just showed a little while ago, I cannot use a frame bag because I have a suspension on it and I thought okay I want a bag that does not have a full suspension and um, one of the advantages of having a fat tire is that you don't need a full suspension because the tire is actually good enough or comfortable enough to work as a suspension itself. So let's go into this box right here get it opened up see what we get inside of this and see if I could get this thing put together myself. It actually says here that you only need a few tools you only need a uh, screwdriver, Allen wrench, or Allen key. You need an adjustable wrench, what we call here, llave uh, casing. Uh, you need a set of pliers, and I believe that is a spanner, but I don't know if it's 10, 12, or whatever. Una llave 10, una llave 12. I'm pretty sure that's the size of standard. It does actually say here, uh, you need a wrench that's 9, 10, 14, and 15 to open the box and get everything in there. Pliers, cables, cutting wrench, blah, blah, blah. Um, Pretty straightforward stuff for a bicycle. Um, I don't know if there's anything else here on the box. There's um, picture it on the side. Even the box is made in China. So let's get this thing opened up, see what's inside. Okay, so here we go, box cutters. It cannot be the only thing holding this down, can it? Uh, there seems to be a little bit of glue there. Okay. We don't need that anymore. There we go. That was a little bit of glue on that side only. Okay, and here we go. This is what's inside the box here. Everything is tied up with zip ties. Um, there is some, yeah, there's a documentation here. 
uh, booklet and uh, fat tires real nice they have a little bit of air in them already look at that they gave me some free air okay so to get this out of the box I would have to cut those yep I have to cut the straps uh, zip ties and uh, this is actually just thrown in here this is one of the things that you definitely have to change first which is the stock seat and it's hard as yes yeah they should have just put a piece of wood on it so this thing is not maybe going to even get used let's set that aside for now go to, into the box uh, pedals are here brakes are assembled all the videos i saw on this actually show that you have to adjust the brakes so i will most likely have to work with that um, let's get the front tire out of there Okay, so let's get some cutters here to get these zip ties off. Is that the only one? No, there's one more down there. Okay, so I got the front tire loose. Let's get this out of the box here. Huh, that's actually lighter than I thought. Cool, I was thinking it was gonna be real heavy, but it's actually very light, considering the size of it, it's four inch tire. Has some protection there. Leave that on just for now. Set this aside for a bit. Okay, now I got to get the whole thing out of the box here. Yeah, it's all one big piece except for the front tire. There we go. Okay, so there was a protector here on the wheel, but it came off. It's in the box and there's a few other things that are in the box that I think is the protection for the back here. Um, those ones have dropped off in the shipping or something. Um, the bike is a bit scratched. Let me go ahead and get the... Okay, so hopefully it's visible here. There's a bit of a scratch here. There's a bit of a scratch down here. Okay, so there's a bit of a scratch here and there, like down here and stuff like that. Um, not a big deal. The color I'm not a fan of. Um, I prefer black personally, but I think the silver looks real nice on the bike. It has a few stickers here and there, not a big deal as well. And uh, basically what I want to do is get the front tire in so I can at least put it on the stand and start working with the rest. I don't have a bicycle big stand that you could hook it up to and work with it while it's floating in the air, but um, the kickstand should work and I should be able to get everything at least put together in a way that it looks like a bike. So let's get that done. Okay, so more zip ties to cut off. You know what, the pedals I'm gonna leave in the bag because I don't like them that much. I may end up getting some metal pedals instead of this. So for now, I'm gonna put it with a seat. I'm not gonna be riding it today. So I don't really have a problem with that having the pedals installed today. So this one is holding this in place here, which is a roll of paper with a bolt in it. Um, this should be so that the fork doesn't, you know, to bend inside uh, so it stays as close as possible to the original position. So I'll take this off here. Wait, I can save this zip tie. Oh, I already cut it. Whatever. Oh. Damn, I damaged it. Oh, there's a longer one there. Okay, that's cool. Could have saved it, but I did not save it. Okay, so big piece of foam to avoid this hitting on the floor, uh, in the box and stuff like that when it's carried around. 
Uh, I don't really want to take this off. Uh, brakes I would like to leave there as well. So I want to just get the tire in place. So let's take this off here. There we go. It was just a piece of plastic. This may come in useful later on. So I'll leave it just in case. And it's basically ready for the front tire here. The tire doesn't have a quick release, but I'm okay with that. I don't really want a quick release because I'm gonna leave the bikes sometimes exposed or in places that with a quick release, somebody may just walk up to the bike and take the tire off and keep walking. So this for me is actually preferred for my current situation here. So what we have to do is get this installed, right? Let's see if we could do that without too much trouble. There we go, that's in place. Okay. Now it's standing up on its own two feet. Let's get the adjustable wrench in here. Okay, and I know what some of you are screaming out there in your heads right now, or at the screen actually, or typing right there some negative feedback or whatever. Um, don't do that put some grease everywhere because it's a stock bike and they don't put grease in yes I know that this is just an initial setup I'm not gonna have everything running like this I just want to put it together look at it see how it is take measurements for the frame bag and work with how I'm gonna get this turned into an e-bike first and afterwards I'm gonna take it all apart get some grease everywhere and uh, then I'll just put it back together again but at the moment I just want to get the thing put together and uh, see how that looks. I'm not even going to use it. I'm just going to, I'm not going to put the pedals on. I'm just going to put it together, see how it looks, see if it's actually all there so I don't have to go back to the store and fight because a part was missing or a part is broken. And uh, then later on when I'm going to actually use it on the road, I will take it apart, grease everything up nice and neat and uh, put it back together again, adjust the brakes, adjust everything I need to and uh, then I'll go ahead and test it out just in case I didn't forget about that it's just not in my plans right now okay and this is how it's kind of looking right now I like the tires they're as big as my hand or even bigger I don't like the fact that they're knobby tires if you've seen some of my previous videos on the other e-bike I actually changed the knobby tires for road comfort tires because of the rolling resistance that's one of the main reasons and because these spill a lot of water when it's raining and stuff you get all wet so one of the things I'm gonna do in the future with this bike is get some comfort roll tires which I actually seen online already but I'm gonna waste these in first of course until I can actually go ahead and get those tires so as they say this will do for now it's not even looking the same way is it off and I, yeah, I can do that.
Oh, look at that. It actually does have grease. For those of you that were saying it doesn't. Yeah, that's, um, that's just possibly to avoid everything getting rusty before it got to your hands. But anyways... I am going to leave the stock handlebar. I don't have a problem with that. I've seen people that have actually changed the handlebars, but um, I don't know, I'll try it out, see how well it works first, and then I'll make a decision of if I keep it or not. Okay, so where is this aligned? New, that's all the way around back there. And what that means is that I gotta spin the tire. A little bit more. There we go. Okay, and there we go. It's fairly easy to get put together to a way that it resembles a bicycle. The only thing, as you saw, that I actually had to put on was the front tire, put the handlebar in place, or at least kind of in place. And uh, that was just about it. Now I just gotta get a new seat, because I don't want that stock seat that's too hard. As I've mentioned before, I do a lot of commuting. That's almost 20 miles to and back 20 miles more. So it's 40 miles in one day. I wanna have a nice, comfy, spongy seat. And the pedals, I'm not really sure about them yet, but since I'm gonna take all that apart and get the greased up later on, I may as well leave them off for the moment. Uh, the kickstand is something that uh, may stay or may not. I'm not sure, I'm gonna use it on the daily commute. I'm not gonna use it on trails, on the mountains. So the weight or whatever issues that you can have with that, I don't really have. I actually may end up getting a double side um, kickstand like I have with the Hyper Havoc actually which has been very good on that bike. Um, leaving it everywhere, I just stand it up and it stays straight. That's it, just tie it up to something and keep moving. So let's take a quick look around the bike here. Uh, the quality of the material, the parts, they look okay. They don't look rusted or anything yet. It is a steel bike, you have to keep that in mind. It's not an aluminum bike. So that would mean that I'd have to be more careful with this bike than with the Hyper Havoc that is made of aluminum and I can get it wet and not think about it getting rusty, but this one I'd have to clean it up and get it dry uh, if I ever get in the rain. The calipers, they're actually, yeah, your standard cheap calipers. They feel good. They don't feel like they're gonna break off easily. I've seen good and bad feedback on these online. Some people say they squeak a lot, but some others say that if you set them up correctly, they work pretty good. I'll look into that. I'm not really a pro when it comes to this bicycle brake stuff, but my brother's a very good mechanic and I'm pretty sure he could get this adjusted. Um, he's done this before on bicycles and motorcycles, so I'm sure he can fix this and get it to work just fine, uh, or at least as fine as this can possibly work, being a cheap, possibly Shimano part, if anything, because it's not even branded. Um, the front one is the same deal. Um, this are kind of basic. I actually bought a kit of universal disc for the Hyper Havoc, which is this exact same disc, actually. I'll do a comparison of that, actually. If you look at this disc here and that disc back there, they're almost identical. There's very little difference between them. They feel the same, the materials look the same, the thickness and everything. So yeah, this cheap brake kit that I got online, uh, it's just the same cheap brake kit that is actually on the Mongoose Malice. And uh, this actually cost me less than $20, including everything. Both brake calipers, both disc brakes, a whole bunch of little bolts that come with it. So I, I would expect that to be the same deal. So let's turn it around, see what we get on the other side. Well, if I could release the front brakes first. Okay, so here we are on the other side. 
The paint job actually looks really good. It has some sparkly stuff to it. it has a pearl color on the rims. Stickers are okay. They're not that big. They're not that, you know, in your face, kind of rag, kind of brass kind of stuff. Um, it has a web page down here. I could get rid of that one. Uh, bottle, you got your screws for the bottle here, the water bottle. Uh, another sticker here is a little bit bigger, but it's uh, the colors help it not be so bright out. Oh, that fell off easily. That's why the other ones are in the box. Let's take this one off as well. There we go. So, some nice space here for a frame bag to get my batteries in there and get this thing running as an e-bike. Okay, so taking a look at the back here, it has seven gears on the back here. That looks like the exact same Shimano freewheel that I have on the Hyper Havoc as well. I wouldn't be surprised at the same thing. Uh, it looks like the same materials and everything. The Shimano derailleur here, it looks like a little bit of a higher end Shimano part of the Hyper Havoc one. It is the Shimano Turney TX. It looks like a better part than the Hyper Havoc has. It also looks better than the one that is, I believe, also a Shimano that I have on my Gary Fisher, actually. Um, but I digress. I may be wrong in that. I'm just thinking about that from memory. Uh, it may be another brand altogether. Anyways, the derailleur is not connected to the bolt of the tire. So when you take the tire off, um, the derailleur stays in place. Not like other bikes, like the Hyper Havoc, actually that is adjusted with this and has a little bolt to the side and every time I take the wheel off it just moves about and stuff like that. This should stay in place uh, but it also means it's only connected to one place so that if you hit it with something it'll most likely break off or bend out of shape or something. So there's no gears up front, you get only one gear up front here uh, but there are seven different gears back here that you could select. That should make it at least so that when you're in a hill that's not that steep you could actually get up the hill. I've been reading about this and getting some information and it says that it's not gonna get you up real steep hills because it's a bit heavier to run uh, these fatter tires, but it should be good enough to run, you know, normal stuff on normal hills. And since I'm gonna turn this one into an e-bike, well, that's not really gonna be an issue, right? I'm gonna run this hopefully on 72 volts, 3000 watts, and uh, get this whole thing running with the same batteries that I have on the Hyper Havoc, the other e-bike project but it's gonna run 72 volts instead of 48, which would give me a little bit more kick and also compensate for the fact that this is gonna be heavier bike made of steel with fat tires. I will definitely not get the same high-end power I would get if I would do something like that on a lighter bike, but it will be good enough because the Hyper Havoc goes up to 35 miles, 32 miles on the straights, and it, I've been able to take it up to 37 and 39 miles uh, downhill and stuff like that. So I think that's good enough for a bicycle. If this one could go 45, hopefully at least close to that i'll be happy with that but we'll have to wait and see until we actually get that rear hub kit installed in this bike as well so since we're at it already let's take a closer look at the seat that comes stock with the bike and the pedals uh instruction manual is uh pretty thick considering yeah i may look into that when i'm bored just because I want to see if it's any good or not. Uh, seat post is standard. Uh, it has the bracket type thing. It doesn't have the adjustable uh, clamp thingy uh, to be removed by buyer. Yeah, something like that. Made in China, no doubt. Uh, as I said, the seat is, if you hit somebody with this, it's gonna hurt. It's uh, not that plush. And uh, it is cut in the middle here. It has like, you know, a thought of getting your parts protected, but it's not that good because, yeah, it's hard. And not in a funny way. So yeah, I'll put it here for now, just to make this thing look like a bike. There we go. And uh, looking at the pedals here, Made out of plastic, reflectors, standard pedals. Uh, everybody I've seen with this bike or any of the Mongoose bikes that are cheap department store bikes have upgraded the pedals because everybody see their crap. Um, I may just leave them like this and just go ahead and buy some better pedals or I may install them to try it out for myself and see if I like them or not, let them break and then buy some other pedals. 
Not sure about that right now. The only thing I'm sure about is uh, I gotta get that seat changed. The shifter here is actually one of those standard Shimano shifters that you get nowadays from all these department store bikes. I've used this before on the, actually on the Hyper Havoc there. Uh, it actually came with this and I used it for a bit and it was okay, but I actually, as soon as I could change it for thumb shifters, and this will be no different. I'm gonna get one of those cheap seven gear thumb shifters, which will definitely be better than this, especially since I'm gonna use a full throttle uh, for the e-bike thing, like I did with the Hyper Havoc. And uh, that'll get in the way, like it did with the Havoc actually. That's one of the reasons I took it off the Havoc initially. Um, so I'll get a thumb shifter for this, get this replaced. I see that it's working down there, so that's good. I don't have to go back to the store and tell them something is not working. I. So the moment I see that everything that has to be there is there, things seem to be working nicely. I just gotta get everything adjusted correctly, those brake pads, get this shifter changed and get everything greased up and get this thing ready for my next e-bike thing. So I'll be back later on with an update video after I get some things adjusted, everything calibrated and try it out on the road. I'm gonna obviously try it out as it is. Standard bike, give it a few runs around, see how well that works compare that to my other two bicycles and see as it stands bicycle wise as a cheap department store bike and also I have never ridden one of these fat tire bikes hopefully it's a little bit more like a motorcycle which I have actually ridden most of my life having this thing with fat tires going at 40 45 miles an hour I think it's gonna be basically like a scooter or something like that hopefully even better because it's gonna be free for me to ride it around I just have to recharge the batteries here and recharge them and work and here I use solar power and it work well I don't pay for that so you know, so there you have it, the Mongoose Malice. It was uh, easy to set up out of the box. I like the fat wheels. If you don't like fat tires, you may want to go with something else, but I really like how the bike looks like that. And I already feel I wanna get this thing on the roads. And hopefully I can get things set up correctly as soon as possible and actually do that. Get another video later on with the setup done or doing the setup and how this thing is actually working out. I hope you find the information useful and if you're looking into something like this, there you have it. As I said, Mongoose Malice, a little bit over $300 here locally, but if you look for it online, I'm pretty sure you get a nice sale. And if you live in a place where you get bicycles cheap, well, good for you, right? Thank you for watching. Until the next video.